Hi guys, welcome to the Raven Wolf channel. This is Anna and today I want to share with you guys a Aztec mythology of two volcanoes and it's actually it's a love story so all right so it's called the legend of Popo Popocatépetl and it's a Cihuatl but since as you guys could tell <laughs> it's the word the, the names are long so I'm just gonna uh, say Popo and Itza. Okay, so on a clear day, the towering white peaks of the legendary Popocatépetl and Iztaccíhuatl volcanoes can be seen from the great metropolis of Mexico City, rising beyond 1,700 feet in elevation. These two majestic mountains offer the viewer of breathtaking sights, snow-capped year-round. The well-known landmarks have captured people's imagination throughout the ages. Located just 45 miles southeast of the nation's capital, Popo and Itza, as many affectionately call these two volcanoes, share a story that reaches back into the mist of times. Geographically, these two glazed iced volcanoes represent the second and third highest mountains in Mexico. The name Itza in the indigenous Nahuatl language means white woman, and the mountain actually includes four peaks, the tallest of which reaches 17,158 feet. Itza is an extinct, extinct, extinct volcano and is a po and is a popular destination for adventurous mountaineers and hikers. Popo is the taller of the two mountains, reaching an incredible 17,800 feet, feet in height. Popo and Itza are connected by a high mountain pass known as the Paso de Cortes. Popo is still an active volcano having spewed smoke um uh, spew, uh, <laughs> spewed smoke and ash uh recently in the Nahuatl language popo means smoking mountain as well as Shalsun Sea was amply named in Aztec mythology the volcanoes were once humans who were deeply in love the legends feature two star-crossed lovers, the young brain warrior Popo and the beautiful princess Itza. The father of Itza, a mighty ruler, placed a demanding condition upon Popo before he could take Itza as his bride. His, uh, his mandate required that Popo first engage in the battle against the tribe's enemy and return victorious. Variations of these legends include the added stipulation that Popo needed to return with the banished uh, enemy's head as a proof of his success. The story continues with Popo setting off for battle, with Itza waiting for her beloved to return. Treacherously, a rival of Popo sent a false message back to the ruler that the warrior has been slain when in fact, Popo has won the battle and is ready to return to his Itza. However, the princess, upon hearing this false news, falls ill and succumbs to a deep sorrow, dying of a broken heart. When Popo returns triumphant to his people, only to encounter that his beloved de beloved's death, his heartbreak is inconceivable. He carries Itza's body to the mountain, whereupon he had made a pari built for both himself and his princes. Grief-stricken beyond measure, Popo dies next to his beloved. The gods, touched by the lover's plea, ah. <laughs> the gods, touched by the lover's plea, turn the humans into mountains so that they may finally be together. They remain so to this day, with Popo reciting over the mount, reciting over his princess Itza, while she lays asleep. An occasion, Popo will spew ash, reminding those watching that he's always in attendance and that he will never leave sight of his beloved Itza. 
Um, also, for the jealous lover, or in, in um, how do you call it? In a variation of this legend or mythology, um, the guy that said to Itza that Popo was died, uh, uh, he actually was wanted to have Itza for him. So the jealous lover called Sitlatepetl became now what she speak of the Orizaba. It's a distant volcano forced to witness the everlasting love of Itza and Popo for eternity. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little love story of this, um, I guess, three, three volcanoes in Mexico City. So, all right, you guys, I hope you guys enjoy and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.